Hi, I'm Jessica, and this is another episode from QBO Common Errors. Um, today, we're actually going to be talking about how to catch reconciliation errors in QuickBooks before beginning this month's reconciliation. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and dive on in. Um, one of the first places I'll look when checking a client's previous reconciliation is, first off, how far have they reconciled? So this particular client has reconciled through May 31st, 2023. And we can see that specifically for this checking account. And that's the only account I'm going to be talking about. So I know they've reconciled through May. So we are going to look and make sure it's ready to go for June. So I'm going to go here to banking and just make sure everything from May is done. And I do see that everything here is just from June. They haven't started coding that yet, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go over here to the bank register. And before I talk about that, I'm going to do this plus new and bank deposit. So this is what we call undeposited funds. Um, this is a super important thing to keep an eye on, especially while you're coding because this indicates payments that should go in within the next three to five business days, depending on what it is. If it's a check, maybe it'll be a week, depending on whose hand you put it in. So here I can see that Cool Cars paid $16.75 and then Freeman Sporting Goods paid $3.87. And so I'm going to check the June transactions before I begin coding to make sure they're not in there. So we're going to start with this cool cars for $16.75. So I'm going to go in here to banking. And I'm just going to go here. I can go to this received column. And I'm just going to see if I see anything for around $1,600. And I actually don't see anything for even above 1000 And the next place I'm going to look is to see if maybe they have coded part of June. So I'm going to go here to the register and I'm gonna look in here in the deposit column. And I'm just gonna look for anything around 1600 or more because it could have been deposited with something else. And I actually don't see anything and they've reconciled through May. I'm just gonna go down through May just in case it was recorded late. Only thing big enough is this opening balance equity and that just means they hooked the bank account up on that day. So it's not gonna be in there. Um, then let's look for this other one Uh, we're going to look for the Spree Freeman Sporting Goods for 387. So let's start with the bank feed. That's the easiest place to find it. 387. I'm just going to go down and all of the th see these have matches. So I know like this is Travis. I know that's not part of it. This is 55 Twin Lane. I know that's not part of it. Same with all these that have matches. So I actually don't see any stragglers. I mean, these two amounts aren't right. So I actually don't see any stragglers that would be associated with that. So this would be a question. If it's your books, investigate it. And if it's not your books, let your client know that um, that maybe these should have cleared and they need to follow up and make sure that either the check went into the right hands or whatever it is because we can't even see how the client paid um, so that so we can't actually do anything further unless we have knowledge of the payment method when it was processed all of that so those would be something to investigate okay the next thing i'm going to look into is the bank register so this will go to bank register takes me to the checking account so this little check mark is a super handy tool to sort by so here i have it sorted by reconciled items first but i'm going to click it again and you see a bunch of blanks. So if I keep scrolling down, I just see R's starting in May. So all of May is reconciled. And then if I keep going above the R's, I can see that there's four transactions that are May transactions, but weren't reconciled. That's a red flag to me because if it's something that should have gone through that day, I would expect that to have already been reconciled but I see there's four. So I'm just gonna take a quick look at them and just see if they're legitimate. So starting at the bottom, I can see it's a sales receipt for Kate Wellen. So that one actually may be a legitimate still transaction. Maybe it cleared on June 1st. Same with Freeman Sporting Goods. This is a different one, 8640. And same with Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So these, since they're close to the end of the month, they're actually not huge red flags for me. 
And then if I go here to this 531, that's Hicks Hardware bill payment, probably again cleared in June. So before I go on to coding June, I want to check if these are something that I can clear off the bat. So Kate Wellen um, for 225, I'm going to go here to this. And since all of these are matched, I'm actually going to do a little trick here and go to all match transactions and select all of these with just one match. So I have to uncheck these that are, have conflicts and just see if that actually resolves any of my um, any of my issues in the stale transaction. So I have Pam seats. That's one of the ones with two matches found. So I have to go in. I can see bank details, Pam seats, and here's the expense. So I'm going to match books by Bessie. Now it has one match because it no longer finds anything similar. And then squeaky clean. I'm going to match it to the 619 one. Okay, and so let's go back to the bank register and just see if we still have those outstanding. Okay, so I can see three of these are still outstanding. That actually may be a, something to look into. This payment to Amy, maybe no one actually ever gave her or gave you the check and it just got recorded. Same with this one and same with Kate. It looks like that money never came in. And so that's something you want to look into before moving past June. So those are things that I would look at um, for stale transactions. One last way to test them can just be looking for duplicates. So for Kate, I'm going to look for this 225 just to see if it came through by itself. And I don't see anything except the one stale transaction. So I'm going to go do the same to the 8640. Again, there, I don't see any duplicate transactions. And then save for the 105. And again, I don't see any duplicate transactions. Hicks Hardware, let's see if we have anything for 250. And we do have something for 250, but it's to Robertson and Associates. So that's actually not a legitimate um, duplicate. Okay, so now that we've looked through the, for the duplicates, I would look one more way just to make sure things didn't come through as a lump payment. So for Kate Whalen, I'm going to just come up here and search for payees just for Kate. So I don't see anything except that one deposit. Same for this one, 55 Twin Lane, the colon, that means it's a sub-customer. So I'm going to look for that guy. 55 Twin Lane. And I do see a payment come through $50, but it's to a different invoice. So that might be something that maybe two invoices got sent, something that needs to be investigated. Let's look at Amy's Bird Sanctuary. Nothing for Amy. So you can see here, these are probably just legitimate stale transactions that need to be investigated. So that's just kind of um, things that you should see as a red flag. A lot of times we do something called a QuickBooks cleanup. So what I'll do is I'll go check this register first, look for duplicates, look at the vendor um, or the customer account and also the vendor accounts, depending on if it's an expense or a receipt of income. And sometimes I'll see stuff from six months old, eight months old, that clearly either cleared or was never true income or expense. So we have to go back and resolve all of those um, after discussing with the client. But that's what I would do before beginning my reconciliation. So if you have any specific questions about this that you wanna see, please leave it in the comments below. Or if you want to see any similar videos, um, you might check out our YouTube channel.